last video, we took a look at some of the built-in effects that jQuery offers, like hide, show, fade in, fade out, slide up, and slide down. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create our own custom animations using the animate method. The keystone of custom animations in jQuery is the animate method. The simplest form of animate takes a JavaScript object or map of properties to animate. Now this is very similar to how we could send an object or map to the CSS method to set multiple CSS properties. Now the difference is the supported styles. So for instance in CSS we could pass any CSS property to the object, but in animate we can only use the properties that have numeric values. So things like width, height, margin, top, etc. Now if you're using the jQuery UI library, it'll actually extend the capabilities of the animate method to allow you to animate colors, but we're going to talk more about that in the upcoming jQuery UI videos. So let's take a little example here. The simplest thing we can do is pass numeric values to our properties. So we're going to be using this page as our example. We have a target div here with a height and a width, and it's going to be absolutely positioned. Right now it's at 100, 100, with a width of 200 and 200. So we'll be using these different buttons to trigger our different demonstration animations to show the different capabilities of the animate function. So if we go back to our code, we can do a simple transformation by passing in the top to be 200 and left to be 200. Now if we just pass numeric values to these keys, it's going to be interpreted as pixels. So when we call this function here, it should move to the 200 pixels from the top of the page and 200 pixels from the left of the page. So let's flip back to our example and reload. And we click and execute our function. We'll see that we now animated to 200 and 200 pixels from the top and left. You can refresh and see that again. It makes a nice smooth animation. Now if we don't want to use pixels, we can pass a string and use m's or percentages. So in this example, we want to move it to the left 100 pixels, and then we're going to move it two m's from the top. So to do that, we do top two m's. So let's save it and refresh it. And so we can see that we now move to 100, which it already was at, and then two m's to the top. So we could also similarly do percentages here but like I said, if you want to just do pixels, you can do pixels like this, or just do it as a number. So we're going to leave this back as ends. So if you just pass a single value to the value of one of your properties, it's going to animate so it ends at that property. But if you want to do incremental changes, you can use this technique to either increase a value or decrease a value. So let's say we want to increase the width. So we'll say width. And to do an increase, we have to do it as a string and our string has to start with plus equals, and then let's say 50 pixels. So if we flip back to our example here, and we click our increase width, we should see that it now increases 50 pixels every single time we click it. So it takes the original value and adds 50. Now you have to make sure that you use exactly this formula. If you try to put a space between it, it will not work. So it has to be plus equals and then the value immediately after it. Now similarly, we can decrease a value by using minus equals. So here, let's try decreasing the height. So we'll say minus equals and then let's say 20 pixels. Now we could do m's or percentages, but we're going to do pixels for this example. So if we refresh, we'll see that our height is decreased by 20 pixels each time we click it. Now the animate function also takes a second argument, which is going to be the duration of the animation. Now as we saw before, there's a default speed for animations, which was 400. But if we want to define our own speeds, for instance, let's say we want it to go over 2 seconds, so that's 2,000 milliseconds. So let's move our object to uh, left, and we'll say 400. So we can click here, and now we'll move it slowly and we can see that it's taking a little longer to make its animation. Now there is a third argument you can pass to animate, and that's an easing function. So let's fill this in right now, and we'll say we're going to move to the left over 2,000 milliseconds. And our third argument is an easing function. Now this is going to be a string name for a built-in easing function. Now there are two different ones built into jQuery. There's swing, which is going to be the default, and then there's also a linear one, which we'll take a look at in a second. 
If you use jQuery UI, there will be more easing functions available, and other plugins may offer different easing functions. And the way easing functions work is it defines how quickly the animation will move through different parts of your animation. So for instance, the swing easing animation will start off very slow, and then accelerate, and then slow off at the end, so it has a nice easy swinging movement. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So you see it starts very slow, it speeds up, and then it slows down into its final position. Now let's take a look at the linear function. So we'll pass it in here. And we're going to say linear. And let's put the value back to 100. So we'll be able to go back and forth and compare. So let's flip over to our page. And so if we move to our right using swing, we see it gets slow, it gets faster, and then slows down again. But if we do linear, it moves at a constant pace. So you notice it goes slow, gets faster, and slows down. And linear, it's much more jerky at the beginning. It just immediately goes at a certain speed and then immediately stops on the other side. Now we've seen how to use Animate to create our own custom animations. In the next part, we're going to take a look at some of the more advanced capabilities of this method. Mm -hmm.